hello my loves welcome back to the channel in today's tutorial we're going to learn how to make a big gown with flowers with spiral flowers at the chest line and using cut lace so it's a it's an ankara and cut lace combo very beautiful as you can see on the thumbnail so this is the ankara and using this is high target you need your long ruler for this project your covers and your calculator your cord list or anything you want to combine your Ankara with or you can just make your big gown without any combination I'm in love with this cord this very beautiful so right now I have folded my fabric I want to show you how you fold you're going to fold along uh, the width of the Ankara so you know Ankara is by 45 so if you fold like this by 45 you can see you won't have the length you want for the big gown and you don't want to have any joining so we're going to be folding along the width of the Ankara or along along the width of the fabric that way you're going to you know it's as long as six yards do you get so that way you can cut out the length you want uh, so we're folding along the width of the fabric the width of the fabric is six yards and why the length is 45 so it won't be enough for you that is why we're cutting along the width of the fabric so you fold along the width of the fabric so i'll start by making a starting point you know guys we always do this just to identify where our pattern or our markings is starting from so from there i'm going to mark the length of this gown so the length of this dress or this big gown is 60 inches so i'm just going to make a mark at 60 inches sorry that it, the camera is not really getting to that point where you can see what i'm doing i'm marking 60 inches i'm going to bring it a little bit closer so you can see because i love you you know so i'll bring it closer then i'm going to add two inches hemming allowance to this first i'll rule this out in a straight line so i'll then add two inches hemming allowance okay you don't want to cut without adding your hemming allowance that's very important except you want to overlock the hem but it's a big gown with big and color fabric of course you need to hem the bottom so i'm adding two inches hemming allowance also go ahead and draw that or make it into a straight line yes so i'll then go and cut it out because you know i have a long width of fabric six yards so i just cut that out and we'll continue with what we're doing yes so and next thing i'm going to mark out is my shoulder to half length measurement for this person it is 20 inches note that i'm working for a plus size a very big person so i'm using the entire width of the fabric now okay for this big gown but for you you can fold your fabric into two using your hip measurement so your hip divided by four would give you what you're going to fold you're going to add six inches to that if you want a big gown but if you want a very full one please you can use the entire fabric folded into two right so but if you want it on a minimum your hip divided by four plus six inches gives you a minimum big gown right so this is the half length okay for mine for my client it is 20 inches i'm also going to mark the chest line for this client it is 10 inches okay so divide the bust by six plus two inches that would give you your chest line measurement so i've marked out this is the shoulder line now i have the chest line and the half length so these are the only lines that you need you don't need to impute your hip line your knee line because it's a big gown so on the shoulder line i'm going to mark half of the shoulder measurements her shoulder is 17 divided by two that's um seven point that's eight point five i'm going to add half inch same allowance to it so i'll mark the same thing on the chest line and then take it up into a straight line now we're going to determine the neck width i want four inches for the neck width that's how wide i want the neck to be and for the neck depth i want it to be five inches all right because i'll just turn the neckline with bias i'm not really doing so much so i'm just making it five inches then i'll curve my neckline the next thing i'll do is to draft out my shoulder slope by marking one inch from the shoulder area then slant it to my neckline the next thing i'll do is to impute my bust measurement her bust is 50 divided by 4 gives me 12.5 so i'll make a mark at that plus 2 inches allowance now it's a big gown you need ease so if you took the measurement to be very fitted you need to add at least half inch to three quarter of an inch seam ease allowance but i added my ease when i was taking her measurement so there is no need to add ease allowance i'm making half of my shoulder half of my armhole line now 
with half of my shoulder to chest line then go inwards by half inch then i'll go and draft my armhole i hope you know how to draft a basic body or a basic dress if you do this upper part it's not going to be difficult but because i have some beginners in the room or in the house i'm just taking the time to show you how to do this now on the half length i'm going to mark the waist measurement divided by four now if you need to add ease allowance if you don't take it in your measurement add your ease allowance before your seam allowance but my ease allowance was included in my measurement so i'll just connect from the bust to the waist now from the waist i'm going to use the long ruler to make a connection from the waist to the length of the dress all right so just get a long ruler and you know connect make a connection from that waistline to the length of the dress like so so slant your ruler like so then connect you can see so connect to the length of the dress and there you have it you have your big gown it is beautiful it is easy to make it is beginner friendly and it fits super well it fits a slim person a big person plus size medium size now if you want to to have your hem curved you can now go in like so from your hemming allowance go upwards by two inches that's to your normal length then just curve it down like so okay from the hemline to your normal length just curve it down all right and cut but i'm not going to do this yet till i join okay so you can do this you can not do right so depending on what your client wants so mine prefers hard prefers has to be wide and straight like that so i'll just go ahead and cut through making sure that i'm cutting in between my chalk like so then when i get to the waist i'm just going to slant it like so just slant my hand like so then cut through the armhole you can see within seven minutes i don't cut in the front pattern it's really that easy so i'll still go ahead and cut out my neckline right and when i get to that point i'm going to add half inch to the shoulder area for shoulder seam allowance so guys if you're new here this is learn to sew with no new here on this channel i upload sewing tutorials every week i hope you like the sound of that if you do please consider subscribing to this channel and you know turn on your post notifications subscribe you know and all those good good things you do to people you love please do them to me because i love you so much thank you for always being here to my returning subscribers i love you thank you so much for all the love you show me on this channel i really do not take it for granted thank you now for the style line that i want from my chest and i'm going to come down by one inch okay so mark one inch i'm just going to go ahead mark it at the other side like so then out connect so from here i'll cut out okay so that i can now introduce my cord list for the upper parts you get so well i'm not going to cut this yet till i'm done drafting the back all right so you need to cut out from here but you do it you chill all right so you cut out the back so for the back i've placed the i've already folded my fabric and i placed the front on it but i'm adding one inch zip allowance for the back okay like so i'm adding one inch zip allowance all the way down you can see so i'll just connect that point now I want to show you something at towards the length of this dress because I use the entire width of the fabric there wouldn't be zip allowance at the lower part so I'll just go ahead and slant it like so just slant it down I want to arrange it so you see properly or very clearly so you can see that it takes up the same space for the back and the front you can see it's the same space so i'm not going to be slashing my zip allowance all through to the hemline okay so from where i have you can see from here this is where it ended so this that's where i'll slash from that point that's where i'll slash my zip allowance from okay then i'm not going to slash it down to the upper part so you have to measure it or just take note of that point so you know where you are sewing from okay so if it's at 17 18 just make a mark or not that area then you start joining from there all right so for my neck width my neck width is the same as the front but the neck depth is two inches so i'm marking two inches then i'll go and cover out my neckline 
so using my curve ruler i'll just cover the neckline and there we have it we have the front and the back so i'm just going to go ahead and cut the back the only difference is just the neckline every other thing is the same I hope you get that so I just once I cut the neckline for the back I'll maintain every other thing that I have so I'll start cutting not my zip allowance okay then I will then start cutting So after cutting, you can see, so I have the same thing for the front and the back. So it's time to cut out uh, this part. So I'll just go and cut exactly the same thing for the front and the back. Do you get, so as I've placed the front on it, I'll cut with the back inclusive. So I need same allowance here. I need half inch at the upper part and half inch at the lower part. So what I'm going to do is to cut through this original line that I have made. Then I'm going to add the one inch to the cord list okay to the bottom of the cord list so half inch at the upper part half inch at the lower part that's one inch so i'm just going to indicate that i need to add one inch at this upper part okay so that's what i'm going to do so I'm, i've cut out then i'll get my cord list so i'll place the this is for the front i'll place it on the cord list you can see then what I'm going to do is to add one inch to the lower part. Remember that we need one inch allowance. That is half inch at the upper part and half inch at the lower part, right? So that way I'm not going to have a shortage. Do you get? So when I place it like so, please, you're going to be hearing a goat bleating. That's a goat easy for Thanksgiving on Sunday. I don't know why it's bleating into my video. I'll be bleating. I'll be making noise. So it's Thanksgiving goats. Please ignore it. All right, so I've added one inch. You know this is cordless, so the chalk, the chalk might not really show. I add now. What kind of goat is this? All right, so I'll just go ahead and cut. You know God has done us well. God has been good to us. God has been faithful. This year, ah, I don't know, but just God just saw us through. So we're going to be using that goat to go and say that mama dirigi chineke, mama dirigi onyama, mama dirigi onyeni mema, mama dirigi onyama. I hope you're thanking God. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. So um, I'm cutting the necklace. See, Thanksgiving has carried me. I've forgotten where I was. This is anyway. This year, this year. Hmm. The shagger was plenty, but God came true. Oluwa was involved, you know. <laughs> you see the way I dance on Sunday. Anyways, so when I'm done cutting out, remember I added one inch. Please don't allow this goat to carry you. So now what you can do is to add satin to yours, okay? If you don't want the body of the person to show, okay? Use satin or an interfacing or interlining to it, okay? So your body will not show. But for this person, I'm going to join it like so. I'm going to be making something for her to wear inside okay i'm going to be using a fabric of the same color with the cord lace okay because i'm making something uh, different for her another outfit that she would need that stuff for so we're going to use one stone to kill two beds so i'm going to be making that stuff for her to wear it inside but you can now cut satin for girls do you get so that your body will not show right so this is the back i've placed it and i remember to add my one inch to the lower part then you cut it out this is why they say go to stop on stop on go top on not the one and i've given this go today still entering my video well it's been that carrying myself to the window where it can be jesus christ all right so just cut ignore the goods and cut like it's like good this goat is hungry <laughs> this is a goat video <laughs> Wow, all right, so I'm done cutting the uh, back. Like I said, for the front, you can as well use your entire lining. Now, for the flounce, I've made my spiral flounce, and this is my crinoline for the spiral flounce. Okay, I have a tutorial on how to cut a spiral flounce and even how to attach crinoline to it. So, I'll be, the, I'll be dropping the link to that video in the description box. All right, so this is my spiral flounce. I had to cut the fabric aligning at the same time. Right, so I'm done fixing the crinoline to the spiral flounce. This is what it is. I don't want to make more because it's just going to be at the upper part. Sorry, at the front part right so now what i did was to notch the midpoint of the main fabric you can see the notch there notch the midpoint of the fabric first before you start attaching anything you can see that's the midpoint 
right so what i'm going to do is to mark out my seam allowance two inches on both sides you can see i marked that out because i do not want the flowers to get into my seam allowance all right so i'm also going to mark the midpoint of the flounce you can see so i'm going to place it at the midpoint of the dress you can see i have a notch there so i'll just pin it down okay midpoint of the flounce to the midpoint of the dress right you go and pin it down so now i what i don't want i don't want the flounce to get into my uh, seam line so that's why i marked it out then i don't want it to be getting so close so half inch after my seam line that's where i'm going to start placing the flounce from you can see half inch away from my seam line so i'll go and pin it down at that point then i'm going to start pleating the flounce now i'll be making inverted pleats also known as box pleats you get so i'm going to be making inverted pleats or box pleats or you can as well just do your pleatings whatever that is just going to tickle your fancy and give it a very wavy look because it's a spiral flounce so you're just going to bring out all your creativity into this part you know whatever you want if you want to do kissing pleats mountain cleats pleats hugging pleats any type of pleats <laughs> that you want to do you get so i'm just going to be pleating this all around the goat has stopped crying and my baby's crying. What kind of combination is this? Forward ever, backwards never. We move. So I keep pleating and pinning. Right. So I'm not going to be pleating this till I end, till I get to the end. Not till I end. I beg you, I've not ended Jesus' name. Amen. So till I get to the end of this. So I'm not going to, you can see this, the box split is already giving me some waves some beautiful waves because i screened in at the uh, spiral flounce okay so i flitted till i'm getting to half inch before my seam line okay that's where it will also stop half inch before my seam line so i'll still pleat it to, to that point and go ahead and pin it down like so now at this point you can now go and sew it down if you want you can go and sew it down but me i have coconut head i'm going to place the cord lace before i join everything together so i also fold the cord lace into two then notch the midpoint you can see so i like to hold just hold the midpoint because this is the cord lace if you notch it you're not going to even see where you notched it from so just go come and hold it so i just place the midpoint of the cord lace on top of the midpoint of the of the dress do you get that way the spiral flounce is in between the the yoke okay because the, the of course the cordless is the yoke in between the yoke and the dress so i've joined and this is what it looks like i fell in love with this dress i wish it, i wish it was mine like i want something as free as this but also beautiful so you can see very beautiful overlock when you're done and also make sure to pipe the neckline with your bias or turn it with your uh, interface interlining if you want to so this is what it looks like so at for the back i'm going to do the same thing okay just join there's there's no spiral flounce at the back so i just joined the cord lace to the dress itself and hemmed sorry i not hemmed because i i finished the neckline with bias and i fixed my zipper all right zip her okay so you can see from the lower part there is no joining the joining now starts from i did it like i uh, like i was sewing it that okay so that's what you do for the lower part because we do not have some allowance there so i also cut out my sleeve just a basic sleeve the tutorial is here on my channel and i'll be nice to drop it in the comment section all right so i'm so happy i don't know why maybe because it's thanksgiving i don't know so uh, this is my uh can you go this is my sleeve mm -hmm so what i'm going to do is to place it right side facing right side okay the front is going to be facing the back right side facing each other i'll go ahead and join the shoulder seam together remember i left half inch when i was drafting you get so i'm going to use that half inch to join so i'm going to join using half inch in my lamas oh yeah i've got to the sewing machine i've joined and you see me back here on the table Wham! i've appeared i've not appeared what kind of nollywood is this appear appear okay i've appeared all right so i've joined the shoulder you can also do well to overlock it but you know it's cuddly so it's not going to frail so and i have coconut head i'll do it afterwards right so now that i've joined the shoulder i'm going to get the sleeve 
so get the mid point of the sleeve as well okay the sleeve head and the upper part that place that has head like that goal that is bleeding in here at that place just get the mid point please my sister there's no point notching because you'll not see it so just hold it down and use your pin to go and pin the sleeve all round so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls women of gold men of gold i'm done so just go ahead and join the sides i'll see you in my next 